Okay. All right. So Matthew chapter 12 this morning. And I'm just going to grab this little text right here and just talk a little bit. And let's, let's pray about ourselves concerning this right here. Matthew chapter 12. And let's get verse 29. Verse 29. Matthew 12 and 29. This morning. And it says this right here. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house? Or else... How can one enter into a strong man's house? I want y'all to catch this. I want y'all to catch this. And let's talk about this this morning because we're going to pray about weaknesses. Verse 29 again, Matthew 12 and 29. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? Or destroy, destroy his goods represents the destroying of his things. How can, how can uh, Satan enter into a a Christ-like house and contaminate and make the person, you know, do sinful things or become sinful? It says, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? Then it goes on to say, accept, accept. It's about to give the reason. Except he first, first thing he got to do is bind the strong man. He's got to first bind the strong man. He's got to first lock up the strong man. He's got to first take the strong man and entangle the strong man into something. Got to first place some kind of thought inside of the mind of the strong man. Got to give the strong man something to wrestle with first. So except he first bind the strong man, and then he says he will spoil his house. So my thought, I want to talk to y'all this morning. It's like I said, I want to talk to y'all about weaknesses, about weaknesses, how the enemy can capitalize on our weaknesses. Weaknesses is something that we have, we all have. You know, there are certain elements, there are certain things about us we have where we carry weaknesses in areas and it is important or it will behoove us to know exactly what areas are weakness to us. If we know that um, we are chocolate lovers, but chocolate is not our best friend, then it would behoove us not to put ourselves in Willy Wonka chocolate factory. If we know that, you know, different things are weakness, if we know that particular foods or particular places or things or even people are a weakness to us, then it would behoove us to not put ourselves in that type of environment. Because what it says here is that the only way that that for, to bind a strong, to, to be able to capitalize or take advantage of or get the best of a strong man's house, house representing the internal place, house representing the place of safety. It is this house again, the only way to get into this house and be able to damage the goods that this house produces is that at first bind the strong man. I've got to first entangle or lock up the strong man. So, but the strong man has to know the areas of weakness. The strong man has to identify the places that are not so really secured because another text in the Bible says that you're only as strong as the weakest link. So you're only as strong as the part inside of you that is the weakest, the part inside of you that you struggle with the most. If it's a issue for you, then it would be best for you to literally get or dismantle or literally destroy that. If you know that it is a problem for you, then it would be best that you make some type of conscious decision that may even cause you to look like a bad person. You may have to say, I'm going to have to put your number on call block. Why? Because it's not safe for me. All you're concerned about is you. 
All you want to do is make sure you get what you want out the end of the bargain. You really don't care about what this is doing to me. So in order to help myself, I'm going to have to put you and your persistency, you and your your slickness and your idioticcy, I'm going to have to put you on call block in order to be a protection for myself. Why? Because every time I continue this, you bind the strong man. You literally put me in a place of weakness. You put me in an area of where I am in the most most divine struggle because it's my divinity that is struggling. I'm in a place where I'm wrestling with who I am and who I want to be in God. So I've got to put this thing on call block. I've got to stop this. I cannot go to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory anymore because I'm so head over heels with chocolate and chocolate is not my best friend. I cannot. I cannot go over to where? Over to Popeye's and they got fried chicken knowing that I'm not supposed to have fried chicken. It's not in my best advantage. Why? Because except if they want to bind me, the first thing that they got to do, they want to take advantage of me. They first got to bind me, literally entangle me into something, tie me up into something that they know I'm going to have a hard time getting out of. There are circumstances and situations that we will have hard times getting out of. It not be as easy easy as what we think, as as easy as though it appears. It is one thing. Like you have to be careful and make sure that you don't continue to miss prayer. If you begin to cause yourself to go through days where you're not praying straight, you spend one day that literally he's binding the strong man because prayer is the strongest part of you. Prayer is the conversation or the communication, the relationship with God, which keeps a part of you strong, which gives you the fortitude to be able to make it. So if he call, gets you, allows you to miss one day, and then the next thing you know, there is another day. What he's doing is, is he's binding the strong man so next he can spoil the goods. He can remove the intercession. He can remove the part that is the servant out of. The, of, out of the inside of you and so now you're back to a place where all you want to do is sit up and Netflix and chill all you want to do is sit up and gossip or all you want to do is sit up and watch reality shows all that that type of stuff you find yourself reality shows to me and I've said this before is nothing but people that uh, people that like that kind of stuff are usually people that tend to love gossip you know they tend to love to be in other people's business because that's what that is. That is literally, it's called a reality show when really it's a fabricated show for real because they really don't show you the realness of what's going on. Camera falling people for real, you're going to see that there are some real arguments that goes on. You're going to see that there may be some nights where their backs are against each other when they are really not getting along, so they're fabricated. But that is people that tend to like to be in other people's business, you know, that's where all of that, see, there is a, a hidden line or a hidden agenda behind everything that we do. And you have to really see it in the context of what it is. It is something that people would love to watch other people's lives and their own personal lives are falling apart. And they can't see that, that they need to build their own lives and what's going on in their own homes, but love to watch other people. So these are things as to where the enemy takes tactics to bind the strong man. So where well, this is time that I could be spending working on things that we have problems with, issues that we have going on, you know, things that are getting the best of us, but I'm literally watching these other people's lives and looking into their lives. And some people look into it with an admiration. Some people are crazy enough to think that all of those things are to be admired when really in actuality, it's a distraction away from things that are purpose, purposeful in their own lives. So all of these things are, are 
or this is stuff that the enemy uses to bind the strong man. This is stuff that he uses to distract in order to pull away the things that keep you connected, the things that keep you. It's nothing wrong with if you want to sit and watch a movie, you know, just for relaxation and all. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. If you have the time to be able to do that, then, you know, you can do that. But when it gets into an abusive spot where it is a consistent thing and it's and it's always, you know, something you ain't read your word, but you sitting there Netflix and chilling. You watching Real Housewives of Atlanta, you and all this type stuff. You ain't picked up a Bible to see anything of what God word has to say. You haven't locked yourself in to spend any private time with God, but you want to see what Nene Leaks them have going on. You want to see what this one has going on going on that's putting money in their pockets and all while they live these fabricated lives and and your life is literally going into crumbles or into shams. It's not a smart thing to be. It's not a smart thing to do. It's not a wise thing to do, but if you're not willing to tell the truth about yourself, all these things are internal issues that we have to tell the truth about ourselves regarding. So all of these things, there has to be a part that says, you know what? I am nosy. I really am, you know, I really am nosy. I really do, you know, I really like to know what's going on in other folks' business. I really do have a part inside of me that that likes to keep up with stuff. You can tell this, I'm going to tell you another way I I know nosy people and, and all is. Nosy people tend to have Facebooks, but they won't ever say anything. You very seldomly get anything, any comment or any any post from them. They just nosy as hell. They just want to see what everybody got going on. They're nosy as hell. It is it's a means of and I said it just like I meant it. They're nosy as hell. They just want to know what's going on. See, all of those things are hitting things that we have going on on the inside of us. I'm telling y'all the truth. It's probably stinging this morning, but you know you'll be fine. Just take your two aspirin and call me in the morning. That's all you gotta do because I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell the truth about the situation. These are things that are going on and these are situations that bind us up. These are things it says bind the strong man. So what that is giving an indication as to say is you really are strong and the enemy is trying to destroy you. See when he comes at comes at us like that it is because we are a threat to him and so you've got to know how to walk more into who you are and to what has you as giving you the potential to be a threat than to be yielding to those things that he's doing giving place or giving way to those things that he is doing. You've got to literally know that, hey, I'm more of a dangerous weapon when I'm in this prayer closet, when I am in this word, when I'm allowing this word to speak to me. I am more of a danger to him than what I am when I'm sitting there watching somebody else's life and looking at their life and admiring their life from, you know, from a, a standpoint that I can't even be who I need to be. What about the people that need me to stand in for them? What about, you know, those people? What about the ones that they, I, I should have been praying for somebody right at the moment, but I chose to, to Netflix or I chose to be in somebody else's business watching somebody else's life when I could have been an intercessor for a life that was about to be destroyed for someone that needed a safe haven and I could have been praying for them. See, these are the things that you have to take into context when you have given yourself to God. Now, if you are living as a sinner, if there are sinners this morning listening to me, then this does not apply to you to a certain degree. Now, you can learn to this, but I'm talking to those people that say they love God and those people that have called themselves or considered themselves to be Christians. This is a literal uh, uh, a, a rebuke, so to speak, this morning concerning stuff that is going on because that is a life that is supposed to be a surrendered life. That is a life that is supposed to be a yielded life. And so that life means that I give up myself in order 
to help someone else. I give up what I, you know, I, I give myself up. I'll let you wake me up in the night if I need to stand in just to make sure that the enemy does not destroy someone. I will allow you, God, to, you know, I will fast, you know, I will, I don't mind fasting to, in order to give myself, in order for you. See, that's another uh, uh, internal affair. When you cannot fast, pay attention to how much you fast. A surrendered life to God is a consecrated life. Pay attention to how much you are, uh, are willing to fast. If you are not fasting and you consider yourself to be a Christian, yeah, I'm talking about you this morning. You consider yourself to be a Christian and you don't live a fast or a consecrated life, you might in a year time might do a three day fast. Get away from here. You are not, uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh, sweetheart. I'm sorry. He's done bind the strong man. The strong man is bound. You better know.